if there is one big casualty here for the UK, it is not just going to be uh, in the music industry, as we are getting into here, with their, you know, ability to be able to tour in Europe and, you know, go do gigs, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Again, people forget, in this day and age, doing gigs and touring is generally where the money lies these days in sort of the music industry. So the fact that the UK has pretty much been cut off from touring in Europe, again, a very, very big area to go and do touring is massive for that industry. But it's not just the music industry as well. It's the drama and the arts industry as well that are also going to suffer. Because, again, I have a friend, um, he's doing Panto this year down in London. Um, so, you know, he said it himself. There's not going to be areas where they're going to be able to go now into Europe because, again, they can't go and go on tour, take their shows into to Europe and go and do shows in Europe. That's an area, again, gone there as well. Um, we are going to lose out massively. And again, um, if you remember, the, uh, the was it The Crown? The Crown was looking for like a young Prince William, but they couldn't be from uh, the UK because they needed to have a, um, a, a European passport. And that was in like the drama and television production industry. So instantly you're going to have whole sections of, of, of things like that where UK actors can't apply for them because they're not part of the EU anymore, especially if that becomes, as we saw there, more and more a requirement for filming abroad in Europe and places around there. So it's going to cut massive sections of like the creative industry off from Europe as well. And we are going to get hurt massively from that in the years to come. So we go diving into uh, this article from the New European uh, about why it's sadly time for European music tours to have their swan song. And I very much agree uh, with it, uh, hence why we're doing it. So um, as always, uh, thank you very much uh, to uh, those people who do support the channel. Of course, uh, Patreon link and my one off donation link called Buy Me Coffee is down below. And of course, if you'd like to hit that like, share and subscribe button, of course, uh, that really help, does help out the channel as well. And of course, remember to ring a ding ding that bell as well. So let's get on with the uh, article then. Hmm. This, as I said, comes from the New European with the title of Sadly, it's time for the European music tours to have their swan song. Really great news, Cultural Secretary Nadine Doris tweeted last week. We've been working with the, with the Spanish government to make sure to make touring easier. And they've just confirmed that musicians no longer need visas to go on short term tours. Indeed, musicians touring for up to 90 days will now have free access to Spain. But it is clear that this is hardly amounts to, a, uh, to, a re to the restitution or the resolution of a growing crisis, one caused entirely by Brexit for the music industry. British musicians have been in revolt over the potential destruction of the EU touring ever since the referendum. Despite the pre-Brexit warnings that third country status and the loss of free movement of workers would hit uh, artists touring the, touring the EU particularly hard, the issue was bungled in the negotiations and the, mu and the musicians now face a very bewildering bureaucratic nightmare if they are even to play their, play their trade in Europe. Specialist insurance, visas and work permits, which are all dependent on individual member states' rules, additional paperwork, paying duty on uh, merchandise, goods, passports, carnets for equipment, and even documentations for musical instruments made of rare materials are now obstructing their road to Europe. Doris's deal with Spain does notably resolve several of these issues, particularly around the band merch, which can be a major part of making touring financially viable. The carbonage rules, which limit numbers of uh, steps to non-residential haulers to make in the EU, and of course a very special arrangement with Spain, is hardly unfettered access to the whole of the European Union the British musicians once enjoyed. High-profile figures have been speaking out with increasing anger. I'm livid about what the government did, Elton John told The Observer, shortly after the fifth, fifth anniversary of the referendum in June. 
They made no provision for the entertainment business. To young people that's just starting their career, it's crucifying. He highlighted the obsession with our 1.4 billion fishing industry versus the disregard for over the 111 pound billion creative industries contributing, not unfairly, to the government's our complete philistines, he said. Shortly before Johnson's comments, the hashtag Let the Music Move campaign was launched, making four key demands of the government of the government. A transitional support package to cover additional costs, an agreement with the EU to allow UK artists to work without visas or permits, and the negotiations of cultural exemptions for carbonage rules, and both in the spirit of fairness and in negotiation, the importance of keeping domestic music scene very vibrant, streamlining entry into the UK for other international artists. While Johnson has not yet put his name to the campaign, more than 200 artists from Little Mix to Radiohead are supporting the hashtag Let Music Move. The Department for Digital Culture and Media and Sports on the DCMS tried to, tried to claim that it was a breakthrough in July of releasing the statement that visa-free short-term touring alliances was allowed at least in 19 member states. While the Daily Express excitedly reported this was an example of Brexit success, the announcement was in fact just a confirmation of existing rules in those states for all third-party country nationals. Some states uh, allow as few as seven working days a year under those rules. The, f uh, the Featured Artists Coalition and the UK trade body behind the campaign and the Musicians' Union were unamused by this framing of the status quo as a government success. Now Doris has repeated the misleading emphasis on her tweet, saying that the 21 member states now offer visa and permit-free routes for touring performers, just six more to go. If her department has secured those arrangements, Embarrass embarrassingly, of course, Ian Smith of the Carry On Touring campaign told NME that the original 19 only became 20 when he pointed out to the DCMS that Romania had already allowed visas for such purposes. It doesn't look as if there will be any genuine action on resolving this issue anytime soon. The former culture uh, Minister Caroline uh, Dungis admissions back in January that the UK rejected an EU offer for special musicians' passports for touring artists because it would have limited the UK's control of its borders. Certainly didn't inspire confidence. The situation on the ground, of course, today is that artists face now increased cost and potentially thousands of pounds to try and make uh, to make tours just simply unviable. Things uh, were so different in the past, of course. The Let Music supporter, uh, Blur drummer Dave Rountree, said this. We played our first gig outside the UK in Rotterdam in February of 1991. We jumped on a ferry with no restrictions for us or our gear. We are start If we were starting out today, we just simply wouldn't be able to afford it. And despite playing in such a dominant role in the music innovation of the 1960s, UK artists actually faced genuine problems touring in Europe before the UK's ascension into the EU. As previously reported uh, to the New European, despite the Brexiteer Roger Dietrich saying that the UK's exit, uh, what's it going to do for the rock business uh, if we didn't tour in Europe before the effing EU, the WHO, in fact, cancelled the tour back in 1966 of the Netherlands due to the failure to gain paperwork permits and the period between the ascension of 1973 and of that uh, transition period in January 2001 will undoubtedly be a golden era of low-cost, trouble-free EU touring for British artists. The true impact of Brexit on the UK's music industry has yet to be seen, and of course the real loss will be the intangible assets. The government treatments of today's artists suggest that Boris Johnson has very little understanding of what our music industry is truly worth. Um, so yeah, this is going to be, I think, a massive damaging coming down the line. There's no way this doesn't come back to to bite us like i say you you said it you saw it here very well and clearly spelled out in the article the creative uh, industry in the uk is worth over 111 billion pounds um to the uk economy that has now been shut off into europe um and you saw it very clearly there musicians do not have the free access that a lot of these people like the dean doris has recently claimed You've got some countries that basically say, well, you've only got seven days. So unless you can fit an entire tour into seven days, 
that's not going to happen. You've also got the issue back pre to when um, before the UK, before the UK joined uh, the EU, touring was a massive problem. The WHO cancelled an entire tour of the Netherlands because of that. And it's not just that as well. Um, the Beatles, I, I found out recently, they used to go, but when, when, when they were just starting out before they became famous, they used to go and do gigs in, um, you know, in the Netherlands as well. That's not, again, it, even back then, it probably wasn't as easy, but think about how many musicians during, you know, during that time have been able to just, you know, take their instruments, go over to Europe and play, you know, do gigs and tours and, you know, expand their musical base. That's how, you know, it works. And there's going to be hundreds of thousands of bands now that are blocked out of that. It made it even harder for them to go and do, you know, European tours. So that is going to have a massive, massive impact on the UK, um, culturally, um, financially as well. Again, it's just a massive um, loss for the UK. And to say that, again, as we've seen before, that, oh, look, we've got all these extra visas. No, it doesn't make it any easier for these artists to go and tour the same way that we had it when we were back in the EU. It's still very hard and will still cost them hundreds of extra pounds to go and do a tour if they want to go and tour the EU. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one of the nation link called Buy Me Coffee. We can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you all next time.